this is Michael from gpdgaming.com and today I'm going to show you how to unbrick your GPD win. There's some special tools that you're going to need. They're listed in the description down below. I'll show them a little bit later in the video, but for now, let's get started. So there are a few things that will cause your GPD win to become a brick. But the most common reason is a corrupt BIOS. This can happen perhaps when you try to update the BIOS and something goes wrong. We've even heard of others just making a single change in the BIOS itself and that causing a problem. What I'm doing here is purposely bricking one of our units. So I'm running an update of the BIOS. I'm going to wait till it gets about halfway through and then I'm going to exit out of the program. So essentially what's happened is the BIOS has been erased but then it wasn't written with the new data. Here's what a bricked GPD win looks like. You power it on, the blue LED light comes on, but nothing ever appears on the screen. Classic symptom of a bricked GPD. So now let's go ahead and fix it. First thing we're going to do is tear it down, which for this all you need is some micro screwdrivers. So I'm going to point out here where the screws are on the back. You're also going to need something thin and flat like one of these plastic prying tools to get the top off after all the screws have been removed. You probably noticed as I was unscrewing the back I missed one of the screws and so then I struggled to get the top off until I finally realized I didn't get all the screws. So learn from my stupid mistake, do not try to pry this thing apart until you've taken all the screws out. Before the bottom of the unit can be completely removed there's two wires that have to be disconnected. The first is this one here, which connects to the fan switch on the bottom and then connects to the main board. I'm simply using a small pair of tweezers to gently disconnect that ribbon. Then the other wire is the one that connects to the battery. You should be able to pull that out with a minimal amount of force. We need to be able to get to the back of the main board. So again, we're just going to be removing screws here. It's pretty straightforward, but I'll try to point out a couple of things that you want to be aware of as uh, you're removing the main board. I briefly wanted to point out here that there is a screw behind one of the cables that attaches to the Wi-Fi card. So make sure you remove both of those cables. You probably also noticed that I did not remove the speaker or the two analog sticks, uh, the, the ribbon cables, I didn't remove those. And the reason I don't do that is I find that they're a pain to disconnect and then reconnect. So just leaving them connected, I haven't had a problem. Uh, but if you want to take them off, it's totally up to you. Now we can remove the heat sink slash keyboard. Just make sure that you disconnect the ribbon cable. I have forgot to do that before and rip the cable. Uh, once that's done, then we can remove these last two screws here and the heat sink should be able to disconnect from the main board. Here's where you're going to need one of these clips. The one I bought is listed in the description down below. There are cheaper models, but I found that they are not very effective. You'll also need to get some wire. And the other thing you'll need is this little converter board, which actually comes with the clip, so you don't have to worry about buying that separately. The other thing you'll want to get is this 1.8 volt adapter. I have heard of some being able to flash their BIOS without this adapter, but I didn't want to risk uh, frying any of our boards, so I went ahead and uh, purchased this as well. I briefly wanted to point out here uh, how important it is that you get the correct pin out. You'll notice on each of the boards it identifies what pins 1 through 4 are and 5 through 8 are. This is very important, otherwise your BIOS software on your computer is not going to be able to recognize the chip and you're not going to be able to reprogram it. Here is the actual USB reprogrammer. This is what you'll plug into your computer and use to reflash the BIOS on your GPD Win. Here's the actual BIOS chip on the main board and I wanted to point out two things. Uh, first of all, there is a model number on this chip and GPD, as 
far as I know, has used two different types of BIOS chips, so you want to make sure that you set the software to the right model and manufacturer. The other thing I wanted to point out is the in the bottom right, it's kind of hard to tell, but there's a little tiny indentation in the chip. Basically what it's doing is identifying for us what pin one is. It's that one in the bottom right, and then above that would be two, three, four, and then on the other side, starting in the bottom left would be five, six, seven, eight. So here I am attaching the clip to the actual BIOS chip. And again, I can't stress enough, you wanna make sure that you're connecting the right pin out. So pin one to pin one, pin two to pin two, and so forth. And to actually connect the clip to the BIOS chip, it's a little bit tough at first to get a good bite, but after you've done it a few times, you'll get a feel for it. Okay, before we plug the reprogrammer into our USB, we first want to install the software on our computer. I'm gonna show you how to do that next. So here is the reprogrammer software that is listed in the description down below. We're gonna go ahead and open it up and we're gonna run the driver setup 64.exe. So now we're going to run the reprogrammer software. As far as the settings, uh, the type is going to be 25 SPI flash. The manufacturer and the name of the chip, uh, this is what I had you look at before when we were looking at the model number on top of the BIOS chip. Based on that, that's what you're going to enter into here. Uh, for this particular model, we're using the Giga device, and uh, the device model number is the GD25Q64, but yours might be different, so be aware of that. We're going to go ahead and hit detect, and if we are connected properly to the BIOS chip, you're going to see something similar to what I have here in my window. Now I'm going to disconnect my chip and try detecting again, and now you see I'm getting all zeros. So that's a good indication that you're not properly connected to the BIOS chip. Uh, if you're not properly connected, you might need to get a better bite with the clip, or you might need to go back and make sure that your pinouts are correct. So now that we are properly connected, we can go ahead and run the erase command that's going to completely wipe the BIOS. Next, just to double check, we're going to run this blank command. That's going to simply verify that the BIOS has been completely erased. Now we're going to use the open command and then point to the location of the bin file that we want to write to the BIOS. I've put a link in the description down below to uh, my favorite one that I like to use with the Win, but if you have a different one that you want to use, uh, feel free to go ahead and use that. Now just hit the program button and it will start to write that file to the BIOS chip. Once programming is finished, it's also good to run this verify command. It'll just make sure that the contents of the BIOS now uh, match the contents of the bin file. And if they match, then we know that the BIOS has successfully been reprogrammed. Okay, great. Chip and buffer are the same, which means they match. So let's go ahead and put this thing back together. So we power it back on, and as you can see, no more permanent blue LED. We look at our screen, we actually get something, we're booting into Windows, and now instead of a brick, we have a working GPD win again. So hopefully these instructions were easy to follow. Uh, I hope it works for you, and we'll see you in the next video.